What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash, and today is September 26th of 2017. Well, folks, yet again on this channel, it's time for another trading tip to help you all in your trading and investing journeys in cryptocurrencies. And today, I want to talk about a tool you can use that's offered on the majority of exchanges known as the order book. It's an essential tool and getting ahead of the game compared to other traders, and you can really use it in your trading strategies. Now, be advised, when I say trading strategies, I really do want to enforce that this is more of a trader's tool. If you're long-term investing and you think something's going to, you know, you're going to hold it for the long term, it's going to go up 3 or 400% in the cryptocurrency space then the order book's not much use to you however it can be useful and i'm going to show you today how you can mainly use it as a trader to really get ahead of the game and know when to lock in profits so without further ado let's jump right into it and let's take a look at the order book for 10x so as you can see we got 10x here on the side and this is the order book for 10x right here so we're going to go ahead and detail and break down how to understand this. I know it seems quite complicated, but really it's not that crazy. Uh, before we do anything, though, to get the full use out of it, you want to make sure that your price range is selected at all, and you can see the full scalability of this. And if you're on different exchanges, you should have an order book with you, but today we're going to use Bittrex. Um, so basically, here's how we interpret it, okay? I want to start off with the simple factor. On the left side here, we have buy orders, okay? These are orders of Bitcoin ready to be traded for 10x, okay? Simply put. And then on the other side, it's the opposite. These are the sell side orders. These are people who are holding 10x and they're agreeing at specific prices to transact back to Bitcoin if there's buyers who come in to buy those sell orders and vice versa for the other side as well. So now that we generally get that, we can see that over the long run, there's a lot of sell orders later on for 10x. Now, how can we know where those sell orders are in the sense of price? When are they going to get locked in? This bottom area on the X part of the graph is the actual price, okay? So we can see the Satoshi amount down here. We can see uh, uh, 63,200 Satoshis here, 63,806 Satoshis. As we go along, it gets larger, uh, the number gets larger as we go to the right because these are the orders at, for future price action. We're hoping that, you know, this is gonna make it all the way to 200,000 Satoshis. That's what these sell orders are saying. The Bitcoin orders over there are saying, look, you know, we will take Bitcoin for 10x when it reaches X price amount, okay? That's what the sellers are asking for. And the buyers either are on the left side waiting and saying, no, I'm going to I'm gonna wait until uh, I get it at this certain price, much like the sellers are waiting to get um, uh, 10x at a certain Bitcoin comparative price. Or, you know, there's buyers who will come in and eat the sell wall or sellers who will come in and eat the buy wall. So that's generally how the trends of markets work. There's people on both sides waiting for their specific price. And again, this number right here on the Y axis, much like how this represents the price section, this represents the amount of Bitcoin there is at a certain level or a certain price. So, for example, as you might notice, as we expand from the Divi where both of them come together and meet, it starts to you start to see a spreading and a growth on both sides for the buyers and the sellers. And there's a reason for this because as you expand out further, there are more Bitcoin that need to be cleared through uh, to reach a certain price, and that's how you can use the order book. So basically, let's go to let's go to an example. I know this is always moving, so you're going to have to kind of reason with me here. Let's say for example right here where it says 220 Bitcoin. Okay. It's basically saying that if we want to get to around 85,000 85, Satoshis on 10x, we're going to have to clear through 220 sell orders um, for 10x. So we're going to have to have 220 Bitcoin on the buy side buying into 10x to get to that price. Now, sometimes it's usually going to take more because there's always the majority of transactions that happen are simply at the bid and ask. They're just always happening at that very low price, that very low divvy. It might not seem like much, but that's where the majority of trades are going. However, if a big institutional buyer comes in, or maybe a few big whales in the crypto space come in, they can clear this sell wall. They'll start eating it up, and it'll start getting lower and lower and lower, and you're going to need less Bitcoin to reach that level because buyers are coming in. And that's usually when you see the big roundups in cryptocurrency. The FOMO starts setting in. The investors start chopping it up. Um, and the same can happen on the sell side. They can start filling in those bid orders. These are the bids over here, okay? And these are the asks. That's what you see in between a trade. And that's why there's a little bit of a divvy between the bid and the ask because they have to come to an agreement on price. You'll never have these two be the same until they lock in the trade. So for example, you see the bid here at 63,980 and the ask is at 64,000. What that is saying in a general sense, in a visual sense, is you have two individuals, one on the bid side, one on the ask. You have one saying, no, I want to pay the, the closest, um, highest paying price for the bid side is 63,980 Satoshis and I'm not settling until I get that price. 
And the other one is the ask. It's saying 64,000 is where I'm settling to sell my 10X for Bitcoin, okay? So it's very visual, but at the same time, you're thinking, well, if they're not gonna come to an agreement, then how are we gonna do this, you know? So if someone comes in in between, like you or I might say, and you just say, you know what? There's really not a difference between those two. I'll pay an extra 20 Satoshis, I'll pay the ask. Or someone might be eager to get out and be like, crap, man, I mean, 20 Satoshis really isn't, isn't much. I need to get out of my 10X now. I think it's gonna crash. And then they go over and they pay the bid price. That's how markets work. And the bid is raised if you pay for the ask price. And the uh, ask is lowered if you take on the bid price. So again, that's how the general sense of trading works. And that's how you can interpret the order book. Now, now that we understand it clearly, the question is, how do we use it in our trading? Okay. Well, we can obviously see that to get up to around uh, 240,000 Satoshi, it's going to take a lot more Bitcoin to get there. Not to mention this sell order book could really get bigger over time if we start seeing some serious moves. Some people might want to lock in profits if it happens too quick. However, we can notice it's not going to take too much to really get this to 68,000 Satoshis. And as a trader, it's only going to take us 45 Bitcoin, really, to get to that price. Well, why don't we set one of our sell orders there and then let the rest run? So what we could do if we wanted to take a partial share, if we go here to the daily on 10x, we could say, you know what? 68,000 not only has it been here recently, but on the order book, it's not going to take too much Bitcoin to get there. With the amount of volume that 10x gets, 45 Bitcoin really isn't that much. We're just waiting for a big scale investor, and this price action is looking very bullish. So what you could do is you could go ahead and agree to set a sell order a little bit before that big even. I'd always recommend you do it a little bit before uh, where the big evens are as well as where the order book is really starting to stack up. So that's a way you can use the order book to know when you should lock in profits and where a lot of that sell site is probably going to block the serious price action from coming in. So a very simple way to use it. And you can use it on other things as well. For example, NEO. We can see that for the most part, it's only going to take about 35 Bitcoin to see this have, uh, a, uh, sorry, about a 10,000 Satoshi jump. And that'd be a nice return on a simple day trade or swing trade. So maybe we could set a position to sell there. And again, Litecoin as well. We can see how uh, it really starts to pack up here after about um, 1,360,000 Satoshis. So again, sometimes you're going to have to settle and continue to climb up the ladder and raise that difficulty level and that risk level. However, the order book can help you know when there's going to be some serious price resistance because of the amount of Bitcoin that need to be cleared before you can go on to future higher prices, as well as the downside as well. So that's how we use the order book, folks. That's how you can use it in your trading strategies. Again, I recommend you watch my Trading for Intermediates video if you want to learn a little bit more in the sense of strategy of applying it. But until then, everyone, thank you all so much for watching the video, and I will see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.